In this lab, we need to configure an IPsec VPN between customer router 1 and customer router 2, but we are using dynamic IP addresses. So the IP addresses of customer router 1 and customer router 2 can change. Okay, so I've configured the VPN between customer one and customer two. If VPN works, customer routers and customer PCs can ping each other. Now we need to verify that when the IP address of one of the customer routers changes, that the VPN is still set up. At the moment on customer router one, it knows that customer router two has this IP address, 881111. But on customer router two, we can force a change of IP address by shutting down interface gigabit 01 and then re-enabling the interface. So no shutting it. So previously, this was the IP address. And now, the IP address is 8811.12. So can customer router 1 ping customer router 2? Notice that entry is no longer correct. Can customer router 2 ping customer router 1? Yes, it can. But we need to update the DNS entry on the ISP server. We're not using a dynamic DNS service in this topology. We're simply using a router as the DNS server. So I need to update the DNS server with the correct IP address. And notice now, customer router one can ping customer router two. So this IP address has changed, but can the Ubuntu devices ping each other now that the IP address has changed? Notice they can, ping each other, even though the IP address of customer router 2 has changed. In the configuration of customer router 1, we haven't specified the IP address of customer router 2. We've specified the fully qualified domain name of the remote router. So it's doing a DNS lookup and setting up a dynamic IPsec VPN to the remote router. That's a very different to a basic IPsec VPN, where we manually configure the IP addresses of the remote device. In this example, both sides are using dynamic IP addresses. You may encounter scenarios where one site has a static IP address and one has a dynamic IP address, but in this example, both sites have dynamic IP addresses. So I've proven that the VPN works. What I'll do again is do a continuous ping from one customer PC to the other, and then I'll get the router to change its IP address once again. So customer router two currently has this IP address. I'll shut the interface down to force it to request a new IP address. So you can see the pings are failing here on both sides. Show IP interface brief. The router has now got this IP address allocated via DHCP. The VPN doesn't work, however, because we need to update the DNS entry. So I've updated the DNS server. So ping customer to davidbomble.com. That works. On customer router one, can it ping customer router two? Yes, it can. So that looks good. And notice it took it a while but the PCs can now ping.
one another. So even though uh, the IP address has changed, the dynamic IPsec VPN has been brought up again and the customer routers can ping each other across the internet. So were you able to complete the lab? This is a difficult and complex example, but shows you what's possible with IPsec VPNs.